Good afternoon, everyone. Are we awake? Do we need to do an exercise to get the blood rushing and pumping? No? All right. So I'm Nadia Morris, the Senior Director for the Procurement Management and Compliance Branch at the PPC. And when you hear about procurement, we hear procurement takes too long. But I am here to debunk that myth today that it is not necessarily so at the PPC. And imagine a world where government contract approvals sorry, are not bogged down by a manual process and you have these mounting documents to review and it's a manual review. So what I'm going to take you through today is a journey where the PPC has innovated uh, their processes. And so here we are talking about streamlining the PPC procurement contracts endorsement process. So about the procurement management and compliance branch, we are guided by the Public Procurement Act 2015. And our primary role is to review procurement recommendations for approval at tier two and endorse tier three contracts. And what are these tiers exactly? So tier one is where the head of entity is responsible for that approval threshold and that is not exceeding 30 million Jamaican dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And tier two is exceeding tier one but not exceeding 60 million Jamaican dollars. And tier three are those values exceeding 60 million. And this week I got a phone call because the minister announced that there will be changes coming. And so they were asking, do I still need to submit to the PPC? Yes, you do. All right. So let's get that very clear right now. You are still required to submit your procurement for approval if it is at the tier two and tier three levels. Understood? All right. And also we have oversight for the specialist sector committees and those are works, goods, consultancy and general services, insurance and information, communication and technology. And we would have had a process prior to 2019 where all the submissions were sent straight to the sectors at NCC. And I'll go deeper into what happened and what policy changes were made to make the process more efficient. So the branch is manned by a nine-member team led by myself. So what you'll see in the next slides is the amount of work that we've put in over the past three years. And it is amazing to see how we've been able to churn out these submissions on a weekly basis because our board meets on a Wednesday. So every Wednesday we are before the board defending these submissions, why you need to approve them and why they are fit for approval. All right. But most importantly, most persons ask the question, is PPC relevant? Why is oversight required? And we are guided, the PPC, by the objects you can find in section 10 of the act, and that is prudence in the use of public funds. We promote efficiency and integrity and ensure transparency, fairness, and equity, not just for, well, for the registration of the suppliers, but also to ensure that whatever has been approved, that the, the approval process is fair and transparent. And you'll see some news articles we are, we are blamed for the procurement process being too slow. And then we have another cap that we can wear where because of the PPC's stringent um, approval process and how we do our reviews to ensure that the government is not at risk where procurement is concerned, we can now dive into being part of this nation building process. It's not just about ticking off a box to say we're approving. We are contributing to national development. When you look at it that way, you will understand the importance of the PPC. All right, what is this figure about? $200.7 billion. Anybody want to take a guess? Take a guess. No. So, for the last three financial years, 
the PPC has uh, ap well, approved or endorsed 1,554 contracts valuing at 200.7 billion. For the last financial year, it was about 70 point something billion dollars. And we haven't finished completing the compilation of the last financial year. So we are ensuring that value for money and prudent spending is being addressed in the procurement process. So there have been challenges because we understood that prior to 2019, when the PPC was established, we were receiving submissions via hard copy, and that's a process flow because we are now ISO certified. So we had to go and really pen the process to see where we are and where it needs to be improved. And so in 2019, we were receiving hard copy submissions, hard copy, you know, and when they submit, they're gonna submit three copies of the said submission. So we are saving some trees, right? And uh, before that, all submissions were routed to the specialist sector committees. So the entities will send them directly to the sectors. And after that review is completed, it is then transmitted to the PPC. And in 2020, there was a policy decision that the PPC would receive all submissions and then we would decide what needs to go to the sectors. And so with that kind of arrangement, you had the instances where submissions were overlooked. They were at the sectors, nobody's tracking them. Where are these submissions when persons call? They're asking what is the status of our submissions and it was just problematic, right? And so the process really entails also receiving submissions um, that is uploaded to a shared drive, a receipt is generated, and then it's assigned to a technical officer, and then the officer will estimate if it needs to go to the sector, and if it needs to go to the sector, we send it to the sector, and then when the sector reviews is, is sent back to the PPC, we finish our review, present it to the board. That was the process in a nutshell. So, in 2021, we introduced a central email and an email that you would receive your submissions from. So one email for your submissions to come in and one email for your decision letters to go out. And we also introduced a standard decision letter because we found, if you remember those old NCC letters that were almost two pages and you're regurgitating everything about the submission, the procurement method, what you observe, and then the we had this grand idea that why not make it a standard form where we can use this to kind of shorten the time it takes to complete the letters. And we would have spoken about eight weeks, Mr. Cam Captain Campbell, but in 2020, we had a processing time of 4.37 weeks. And that was still not good enough. And so we saw a gradual decrease between 2020, after we had that policy decision, and then we saw the processing time going down to 2.1, and it's now a little bit under two weeks. Still stuck at 1.9, so let's see how we can work that out. So this is the journey to innovation at the PPC. We began in 2019, after the first retreat that we had, we said, okay, we're rationalizing the process, sector is no longer going to receive all the submissions. In 2021, we brought the processing time from 4.37 weeks to 2.1, and then in 2022, down to 1.9 weeks. And in 2023, we started the development of the, the software solutions to aid us in com complementing the work that we do. And you would have heard about the DVBI and the supplier registration system. And so, I'm going to talk about my system, my baby, <laughs> because it took many tears and many heartaches. If you know software development, it is not an easy process. You will question life if this is worth it, right? And so the PEDMS, which is a procurement endorsement database management system, it is a bespoke um, application and that was developed over a period of two years. So this is basically automating the manual process. We had extensive uh, 
piloting and development, back and forth weekly meetings with our developers. And that has been done since 2023. And we deployed on December 19th, 2023. And currently, we are in full rollout across GOG as of April. Full rollout. So I'm, if procuring entities are here in the room, please be reminded that your submissions must not, must not be sent to submissions at ppc.gov.jm, but to the Pedemis platform. And we've been engaging in trainings and sensitizations since January to have our stakeholders on board. So what is the Pedemis really about? It is a system that has a single sign-on. So if you have an access to the DVBI platform, it is the same sign, sign in information that you'll be utilizing. So you'll not need to create a new username and password if you already have an account on DVBI. And the same will apply if you have an account on Pedemis, you won't need one, a new one for DVBI. It does request the access to the relevant applications. And so what is so grand about this system? Real-time tracking. You won't need to call the PPC. Can you tell me where my submission is? No. Those days are gone. And I am grateful. And so you are, you are able to see, you get email notifications to see when the, the submission moves along the chain. When it's submitted and assigned, you'll see that. When it goes to the sector, you'll see that. When the decision letter is ready, you'll see that. And you'll be able to generate a decision letter from the system. So everything is done online, and it is a centralized database. So you understand with centralized database, the information is more accurate, and it's timely, and it aids us when we're preparing our annual reports, when the minister wants to say, okay, what is the process in time? How many submissions have been reviewed by the PPC? At the click of a button, we now have that information. So I am elated about that. This is just to show you a visual of what it looks like. Um, the dashboard, you're able to see uh, the number of applications by status and the amount for your procurement entity in this case because it's a user-based role access kind of situation. So you'll be able to see only information for your procuring entity at all times. This is just to show you that we have five transmittal forms, so even emergencies and requests for approved unregistered suppliers, everything is done on the system, and it mimics our regular transmittal form, and you have the different areas that you would complete, etc., cetera, et cetera, right? And so as a testimonial from one of our procuring entities, they were the first ones to call us before we asked. <laughs> and they were excited about the fact that when the decision was completed and they got an email that it was now downloadable and you have a password to access. And so they were able to um, upload two submissions and receive the endorsement and approval in less than a month. And they were really praising the real-time status updates and the overall improvement in review efficiency. What are the next steps? You know, with any process, you have to examine if the process is really working the way it should. And even with an automated system, there are still areas for improvement. And so one area we'll be looking at is business process re-engineering. And there are definitely software refinements that are coming on stream this financial year and the next financial year. And the one API I'm trying to forge right now is the connection with GoJEP, where you won't need to re-upload the same information that you can access from GoJEP on Pedemis. So that is something that is now in development, in discussion, and we are seeking to see how best we can equip our procurement entities to enable faster processing of the submissions that we receive. Because sometimes the quality of the submission, while you may submit it, the information, we can't really use that for our review. So when you see us asking you for additional documents, it's not to annoy you. It's really to present a case before a board of commissioners because if those, that information we're asking for is not there, it is likely that you are not going to get an approval. So we're not doing it to annoy you, we're just doing it to help 
the process to ensure that when the, the, the review is completed, that you get your approval or endorsement letters. And I'm looking even further to reduce the processing time from 1.9 weeks, ED. Let's see how we can do that. Thank you for your time. Any questions? No questions? Awesome. Thank you.